Hello again. Thank you for joining me and allowing me to share these spiritual thoughts with you. And I hope again you find them uplifting and thought provoking as I think about the scriptures and um, especially the Lord's Prayer this morning. I was reminded of, and this is not a bash on the Catholics or the Pope, the Pope at all. This is just as I sat here and mused and thought about what transpired and what the Pope said, what came to my mind. Okay. And so I'm just going to record it. He said over a year ago, about a year ago, or just over a year ago, um, it came out that he said that the Lord's Prayer needed to be changed. The part that says, lead us not into temptation. Oh, you so say you're praying to the Lord to lead you not into temptation. And, and the, prim, the, the reasoning behind it was, why would the Lord lead you to temptation. The Lord would never lead you to temptation. The devil would. Okay. All right. Let's stop right there. First of all, look back again at my favorite scripture, and let's see how, how, how this matches up in Isaiah 46, verse 9. Again, I am the Lord God. There is no other God. Okay. So put that off the list. There's no other God. We know that. But he wasn't done. And what else did he say about himself? And there is none else. And there is none else. Yeah. Now, you know, the Lord can lead you to temptation because the Lord, I'm telling you the truth here, guys. I know that so many Christians find this unbelievable. Evidently, they don't have the faith to know that, that what he said about himself in that verse is the truth. But it is the truth. He's, I'm the Lord. There's no other God and there's none else. All of this world that you think is something else besides me, that is not what it really is. There is none else. There's a reason why, and I'm going to boldly declare it. There is a reason why we are to love God with all our heart, mind, and strength. Because the truth of the matter is, the ultimate truth is there isn't anything else to love. And the second commandment is like unto it for a reason. Love your neighbor as yourself. Why? Because those three things, God, you, love your neighbor as yourself, your neighbor, and you, those three things are one. And that is the ultimate truth. And that has been the truth all along, even though the devil says, that's not so, God. There is someone else. What about me, God? See, the devil's the ego. And um, again, let's go back to, he's the ego. He's the false self. That, And it's very real. He's within all of us, this false self. It's the ego and ego eme. He said in the Greek, before Abraham, Jesus said, Ego, eme. All he had to say was eme. Eme means I am. And remember in Exodus, he told Moses, tell him, Moses, I am sent me to you. And he said in the next verse, this is my name forever and for all generations. You see, before Abraham, eme. That's all the Lord really needs to say. But he doesn't. He includes the false self that is made of the I am called the ego. And he says, ego, eme, which literally translates as, when you look in strong um, concordance or you look in the, Greek, in the Greek dictionary, ego means I and eme means I am. So a literal translation was I, I am. You see this I, this ego, God allows it to be there. But the ego likes to say, I'm the true self. I'm the ego. I'm who you really are. And the ego is a lie. You have been fashioned out of God. That is why you are a child of what? God. God is the truth of what you are. And there is none else besides the fact. You know, God, it says that in, it says in the New Testament that at the end times, he will send a delusion into the world. Why? He said, so that they will believe a lie. He wants them to believe a lie. Why? so they will be damned. He wants them to be damned. Why? Maybe they didn't ask to not be led into temptation. Jesus put that in there for a reason. 
You are acting like the truth is there is someone else besides God called the devil. God is 100% sovereign over the devil. That is why in Romans, in the book of Romans, it says all things work out for those um, who are good, who love the Lord for good, because he even uses the evil for those that love God and it will work out for their good even the evil, because he uses, the Lord uses the evil just like a puppet on his hand. You see, evil's not in charge. He uses it because he is in all things, all things that are good and all things that are evil. That does not mean he is evil. Because he is also in the evil and can use it, doesn't mean he is evil. He said, I made all the good, I made all the evil, he said in Isaiah, I made all the dark, I made all the light. You keep acting like Satan made the dark. Satan didn't make anything. All things were created by the Son of God. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, the Bible says. So he made all things yesterday, and he made all things today. See, that's the part that people don't agree with. They don't understand the scriptures. He made all things today, not just yesterday. So all the things that you see being made today, man likes to take the credit for it. Oh, look what I made. And God's going, I is the ego, ego eme. No, I am made that. For without the I am, the great I am, you can't even say, I am whatever your name on earth is here right now. After that, you can't even say it. Because he is the great I am, because the ultimate truth is he is being, being every I am that has ever been and ever will be. So love him with all your heart, mind, and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. And who is your neighbor? Even your enemies, Jesus said. Even your enemies. Now, who are your enemies? Your enemies are the ones who deny the truth. But just because they denied it, does not make it the lie. See, they love the lie. And the father of all lies is the devil. The father of all egos. Because the egos want to say, um, I am me. You know, in Mormonism, they have a scripture, and I'm going to use it anyways. Because it talks about it, we talk about it in the book of Revelations. In the book, well, first let's look at it in the book of Revelation. Their knee, um, it says, for they are neither hot nor cold. So I will spit them out. You see, God wants you to either be hot or cold. This hot, cold is opposites. Up, down, high, low, hot, cold. Don't be hotter or colder because now you're in dabbling in lukewarmness. Don't be higher or lower because the root of high, low or higher and lower is high, low. You see, we return to the, the root of opposites. Duality is opposites, hot, cold. Now, he doesn't care if you're hot or cold. Be one or the other. Just pick one. But don't call hot, cold, and cold, hot. But he doesn't care which one you are. He doesn't care if you're high or low. Just be one. But don't seek to be higher. And don't seek to be lower. Do you understand? We return to the root of opposites because he is the root of all duality. And there needs be, according to even the Book of Mormon, and I told you about the Book of Mormon. I don't believe the Book of Mormon is what it claims to be. But you know, it's even included in the Book of Mormon in their second Nephi chapter two, verse 11. There needs be an opposition in all things. And so when you look deeply at one end of the proverbial stick, you will find it is made of the same thing the other end of the stick is. Do you understand how the, if you understand how one stick, one pole, can be two and have two poles. Then you understand polarity. You understand opposition. And now when you understand opposition, you can say that which is not God. What's the opposite of not God? God. God is in all that is not God. But the not God is the ego. And the not God wants to say, I am the truth of me. I am. The false ego is the truth. No, the ego has been organized from that which is eternal and fashioned into your personality and what you call yourself, but it is not the truth. Jesus said, I am the truth and the truth will set you free. And I hope you found these thoughts